Good morning. I'm Jan Cope, Provost of the Cathedral, and it is my joy and privilege to welcome you to this morning service of prayer and scripture and reflection on Thursday, May 21st. Let us pray. Lord God, you've brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at the 44th verse. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city until you've become clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. Today in the church, we remember the Feast of the Ascension. As you just heard in that Gospel of Luke, it marks the final time that Jesus appears to the disciples. Ascension Day is the 40th day of the Easter season when Jesus ascends into heaven marking the end of his appearances to the disciples following his resurrection. We understand that Jesus now sits at the right hand of God. Having grown up in a church that was named the Church of the Ascension, I confess to you that I never spent much time thinking about the name of the church. In the little town I grew up in, all of the churches seem to have more common names like First Baptist Church, First United Methodist Church, First Presbyterian Church. And so being in a church named Church of the Ascension made us a little bit different from the norm. But what I do remember is some of the iconography in that church that symbolized Jesus' ascension into heaven. And of course, in art history, that's been characterized in so many different ways, including here in Resurrection Chapel. The last mural panel in Resurrection Chapel depicts Jesus ascending up into heaven with all of the disciples and the people gathered around him as he gives them the charge that they are to carry on his ministry once they've been empowered with the Holy Spirit to do so. So many artists over the centuries have depicted this mysterious mystical occurrence in sometimes breathtakingly beautiful and sometimes really sort of comical ways. Some of my favorite depictions show a group gathered on the ground in clouds, and just below the clouds, you can see Jesus' feet, but the rest of them has obviously already ascended. What are we to make of the ascension? Well, in essence, I believe it provides a bridge between the ministry of Jesus 
and the mission of the church. Former Cathedral Dean Sam Lloyd, in speaking about the Assumption, made the point that Jesus takes our human life into the very heart of God, including the suffering, confusion, and wounds of our day. Our own struggles and pain are being held in the heart of God. That seems even more important for us to think about and to carry in these challenging times. Jesus tells us in scripture that he is in us and we are in him. Jesus commissions the disciples and you and me to carry on his work of healing and love and reconciliation. Looking around our country and the global community today, we still have a lot of work to do. Know that we never undertake it alone because Jesus promised to be with us to the end of the age. Amen. And now let us pray in the words our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, we pray for all those affected by the coronavirus around the world, for the leaders of the nations that they may work together for the common good. Give public health and government officials the strength and will to act with wisdom and compassion in service to all. Remove the presence of fear and anxiety from our hearts and heal all those who are sick with the virus. Give skill, sympathy, and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work, many will be restored to health. All these things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into heaven, so may we also, in heart and mind, there ascend and with him continually dwell who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I danced on the earth at Bethlehem, I had my birth. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance in me, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be. Sabbath and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me.